One year later, the Retro Gamers are still here. This is the official one-year anniversary of the Retro Gamers going weekly, becoming legit. Larry here. And Anthony here. What's going on, Ant? Uh, happy New Year? Uh, sh- sure, Happy New know. Year. I mean, uh, although although if it's judging, it, which calendar are you going by? I guess it's really important. <laughs> it's the year of the Yoshi. Oh, well, in that case, then... No. <laughs> and so uh, it's kind of you know, last week was our big five zero. This week is kind of the one year anniversary, if you will, of us doing this on a weekly basis. And it's also a crossover episode. Crossover. Whoosh, whoosh, da, 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 da. Crossover. No, please, I, we, we talked this, about this last week. No sound effects. I'm going to fight you, and I'm going to fight Frank on it each and no, every week not, on The Better Half. Absolutely not. Just just, just introduce Josh. So, <laughs> so we got <laughs> our, our pod brother from Victims and Villains, Captain Nostalgia himself, Josh. Josh, what's going on? Hello. No, <laughs> sound, no, no sound effects. Wow. What? It's all about that base. <laughs> yeah, honestly. <laughs> Josh has had a day. What's going on, Josh? <laughs> Nothing too much. Just uh, chilling in sunny Western California. There you go. You're in California? Psych, Pennsylvania. Oh, I was going <laughs> to say, say, wait a minute. Did, did, wait, you're here? Where the two you? of you. I can't, I can't be the only one here on the East Coast. So. I'm behind you all the time. <laughs> so, uh, And it's not just victims and villains now, Josh. you got a plethora of shows happening over there. You want to uh, let some of the uh, fans of the Retro Gamers know what else you have happening over there? Yeah, sure. So uh, we, back in April, we had started kind of entertaining the idea of expanding our universe that we had called because one thing that we do with ours uh, is uh, obviously suicide prevention. Mm -hmm. Uh, But we wanted to expand it to uh, certain pop culture and really kind of hone in on, you know, niche area so to say kind of like what you guys do with retro uh gaming and uh gaming in general for like you know the e3 specials and stuff like that we are kind of like all over the place with with victims and villains (laughs) like we do everything from you know anime to video games to uh, comics movies memorials and so on and so forth and so we wanted to hone in on very specific uh you know genres uh, so to say and do suicide prevention and uh so uh, if you guys are dc comics fans we have reborn and remembered uh with you with them that is the right now that is the only show that um i helped to develop the idea of the show but uh i have nothing to do as far as like producing or like hosting or anything else like Mm that um ian bates and and micah kimber doing that show they're doing they're killing it on that one um excellent and so pretty much the idea of that one is as talking all about DC Comics and letting people know that, you know, you're not forgotten, you are remembered, um, <laughs> and your your season can be, you know, a, a rebirthing process, so to say. And for all the nostalgic people, your listeners here, um, we also have a 90s nostalgia podcast called the PS Midnight Cast, which I am also a host of over there. Uh, with my good friend Brandon Miller, and all ours is pretty much uh, talking all about uh, 90s pop culture and that uh, there is a light in darkness, and that is what we are here to to do. So we're three episodes deep as of right now onto both of them. Um, By the time this episode drops for the Retro Gamers, the fourth episode of... Reborn and Remembered will have gone up, and then next Wednesday, the fourth episode of um, PS Midnight. PS, yeah, PS <laughs> Midnight Cast will go up, and uh, that is all about uh, Ghost in the Shell. So, ooh, nice. Yeah, I like nice. PS Midnight Cast. Right. I'm very '90s. I realized. So, there we go. Very cool. And DC fan over there. Well, probably Not more me? Marvel. No. Right? I'm a Marvel fan. Yeah. Marvel. But I, I did I did read some DC, not a lot. Okay. Of course, I don't read it. I don't read comic books anymore. <laughs> hey, don't blend. What? <laughs> colors don't blend. Look at that. Look at yeah, that man, DC look tattoo at that. right that's there. A nice, that's a nice logo. Nice. Holy cow. So, uh, all right, excellent. Well, good stuff there, Josh, and definitely continued success for all, all your podcasts. Um, and this week, though, we've been, the three of us, 
this month. Actually, Ant's up next. Uh, we we're going to talk a little bit uh, later on about it with Castlevania, but we've been working a lot together um, with the shows, and I think it's going to continue on. I have a feeling maybe Retro Gamers and Victim and Villains won't be the only two shows that may cross over. So we'll uh, we'll see what happens as as we go down the road. We will never tell. <laughs> we, we'll never air it. We'll record it, but never air it. I was saying we'll, we'll never tell, but we'll always blackmail. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Ant's freshly back from Japan again. Again. <laughs> What'd you That's all I got. What, this was, <laughs> we kind of know this where this trip. is going at this point. I don't know. This, yeah. this was trip number eight. Wow. <laughs> Get those frequent flyer miles. Good Lord. I know. Eight in eight months. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you went in December. Bond. Yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah, counting December, well, I've, I've done eight, eight trips in eight months. There you go. Um, so what did so, Super Potato yeah. have to offer this week? Um, sadly, I did not have time to go to Super Potato this uh, this trip. It was uh, it was an abbreviated trip. Blast and uh, I, was, I, was staying in, I was staying in Tokyo. Oh, I wasn't okay. in Osaka this time. And um, Super Potato wasn't close enough to my hotel, so I could not get there. Uh, it was also part partly because it was also like ninety something degrees and ninety percent humidity, kind of like New York summer weather. Yikes. And uh, I'm I'm not used to that anymore because you know I live in sunny, dry <laughs> California. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so so going out going out into that oven and sweating three seconds after you're outside is not something I enjoy. So uh, no trip to Super Potato for me. Oh. However, what do you? Got? However, as as would be the way, I always find a way. So <laughs> I happen. I happened to have stumbled stumbled across another store in Japan um, that was near my hotel uh, that sells. It was kind of like um, kind of like a used book and electronics store. Okay. Um, I don't know. It's it was called it was called uh, it's called Book Off. Hmm. Huh. Uh, and apparently, according to my sister, it exists weird titles on over the east. It, yeah. According to my, uh, according to somebody I know, it exists on the east coast. Really. Um, but uh, completely different, uh, same same uh, same kind of place, but different uh, different logo. So okay. anyway, so I I decided to go there because it was close to the hotel, and I had a few hours to kill before I went back t- to the airport um, to fly home on Friday. And I go I go into the store, and I'm like, okay. I was like, so they have books everywhere. They have um, you know, D- uh, they have a whole floor of DVDs. And let me tell you something. You know, how we have special edition DVDs for certain sets and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Our special edition sets pale in comparison to what Japan does for theirs. Oh, I can only like, imagine. I, no, I mean, like, I saw, like, um, I saw, like, a Spider-Man DVD box set, and I swear to God, the box was about, like, three feet tall. And wow. I, have no idea, I have no idea what was in it. It was, like, this super deluxe thing. I think it had, like, a big figure in it or something. Sp- it was cow. insane. Small child dressed like Spider-Man. Yeah, basically. So, like, there was this whole floor, like, department store level, just loaded with DVDs. And then there was this whole section just for special editions because they were massive. Oh, man. Um, I kind of wanted to buy one to bring home, but then I found the video game section, and I just went over there. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, so I found the video game section, and at first I, I only saw, like, newer stuff, like PS4, Xbox One, Wii, Wii U, that stuff. But then, like, right behind that against the wall, they had some retro stuff. So I'm like, oh, cool. I was like, I'll start going through the retro stuff, obviously, to see what I wanted. Um, and I noticed that their prices were really, really good for really? Uh, some of the games. So, and I think, they were better than, I think they were better than Super Potato. So, no. Uh, so you can't I, talk about the unofficial sponsor of the show like that. I, well, you know what? They need to get better prices then. I um, was listening. They're all, they're, well, you know, I, if if they are listening, they need a translator for our show. So, um, <laughs> no, I was pretty good last week with it. No, nah, that was terrible. <laughs> so, uh, so I, yeah, so I went a little shopping crazy because I was so excited that I found a new store and I had to, you know, make my mark for my first trip. <laughs> <laughs> oh so, boy! So, so we'll start with uh, we'll start with Super Nintendo. America so for Express Super Nintendo, I picked up uh, Mario and Wario for Super Famicom. Mario and Wario. Yes. What is that? Mario and Mario. Okay. So, never... I, I don't know. I've, yeah. I've never seen this before, so I had to pick it up. Nice cart. Uh, yes, very nice cart, and it was only 500 yen, there which is even better. So that's Sweet. about 450. <laughs> I love that exchange rate. <laughs> um, I picked up, just because I want to see how fun this could be, I picked up Monopoly. So, <laughs> <laughs> Japanese, playing Monopoly in, J- Jap- in Japan. That's awesome. Japanese I used to... Fun. I used to, me and my friends used to play Monopoly, the legit game, and then, like, at one point, we would just move it to the Nintendo mm-hmm. version, because you were able to, like, customize it. It was weird, like, we picked up virtually. 
Oh, cool. All right, I got this game. I have no idea what this game is. I bought it for the artwork on the cover, and then I need to do some digging to figure it out. But uh, check out check out that art. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't Go-eyed Asian what, child. What, yeah, so it's a weird game, and it's got like a little – it almost looks like a, wi- a little white like character is, that – Is that a lamb? Be, I, look, it could be a lamb, but whatever it is, it's it's jumping towards the 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 lower regions of this guy, and I don't know. I just I just had to pick that up. So I'll post images of this on our Facebook page so everybody can see what I'm talking about. But I thought that was kind of cool. Oh man, maybe we should do that as a live broadcast. Uh, po- possibly, it'd be, it'd be like, look, it's coming at you. <laughs> um, and then uh, I picked up uh, Rockman X, which is Mega nice. Man X. Nice. Very cool. Nice. Good stuff. Um, and then I also picked up Mother 2, Ooh. which is Super Metroid. Yes. For the Super Nintendo. So, wow. Um, and so that was... Oh, no, wait. And then I'm not done. So for, for Super Famicom, I also picked up um, Space Invaders, the original game. Wow. Uh, nice. In its box. I like how it's it's literally called Space Invaders, the original game. Well, because it is the original. <laughs> that is awesome. So, yep. Very cool. Um, really cool. And then uh, I had to get this because it was in tremendous shape. And I'll just share it with you really quickly. But Super Mario oh, RPG. Look at that box. Uh, wow. The box is in excellent shape. That's some artwork right there, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> and, and here's the uh, cartridge, which oh. still has its plastic on it. Not even touched. I know. And the book, the instruction Wow. Book. It doesn't even look like it's been opened. No, not at all. No. So that was my uh, that was my haul for Super Famicom. That is sweet. Um, Josh, if you haven't stopped playing an RPG, Super Mario RPG. It Super is Super Mario worth RPG it. is absolutely fantastic. But okay. I recommend you play the um, US version so you understand what's going on. Thank you read it, yeah. <laughs> Unless you want to learn Japanese. So that was my haul for Super for the Super Famicom, but you know, <laughs> well, we're doing I we're would, doing this by by uh by system. Why would I, why would I, I was going to say why would I stop there? So um <laughs> Then I went. Then I went to the Famicom section and decided to beef up my Famicom collection. <laughs> so I picked up uh, Yoshi's Cookie, fun game. Cool. Yep, uh, it's a cool game. And, and then I picked up. They, they call this one Yoshi's Egg, but it's Mario and Yoshi. Oh, it's probably Yoshi. Here it's just yeah. Yoshi. Yeah. Here it's just Yoshi. Yep, that's a fun so, game. Yeah, Yoshi's Egg. Um, I picked up. They call this Hyper Olympic. So it's the Olympics. Oh man, Hyper Olympics. Okay, yeah, that's that's, for, that's before was, the drug it was, testing. It was very expensive. It was one hundred eight yen. There you which go. About a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I picked up. I don't know if you remember uh, Urban Champion. Oh, I do. Remember that game, Josh? I don't know if you remember that. That's an oldie. Uh, that's probably a little this bit. This was kind of like a, yeah. this was kind of like a better. It was almost like um like a Double Dragon with a little bit of RPG elements yep, to it. Yep. Oh. So, the the Japanese like Famicom carts are so colorful. Each one's a different color. It's funny. They are. I, and I, was, tra- yeah, right? I was trying to figure out if there's like a, a theme to them, like like red is sports or mm-hmm. orange is, but but there's not. <laughs> um, uh, I also picked up Excite Bike, classic, which is a classic. Classic. And then uh, I picked this up because I thought it was funny, but um, uh, it's called Bebop High School. It's based on a it's based on a TV show in Japan from the eighties. So looks, looks like I, Bruce Campbell. Yeah, so I, I turned bit. it on and basically it's about um, it's about like these like the high school delinquents like who like they have like a little gang in school and then you like go around with the gang and cause trouble. I'm like I have no idea what the hell that is, but um, I thought it was awesome. <laughs> but it's um, yours now. And then, and then and then and then and then I picked up um, no F1 racing. Ooh, okay. In, in box, which is very. This one's actually just a simple box. I think I cool. have that game. F one racing. I think that was one of the ones when I got that uh, that ah. that subscription box. Ah, Ugh. and then last but certainly not least for the cartridges I bought for myself, I got and you'll love this one, Larry. Gradius. Oh, sweet! And nice. the box is in really good shape. Yep. Uh huh. Very nice, very nice. Which is very cool. I go, and the cartridge stuff. looks great. Look at that! Unbelievable. And Man, you don't do anything to the over there. Wow. Instruction booklet as well. So the collector in me is uh, really that, starting to. So that was my <laughs> haul from. Um, that was my haul from uh, Book Off. All right. But the um, the best thing I have to say that I bought at Book Off was, as we all know, the elusive 
NES Classic no, that what? I was never able to get here in the States. But when I was at Booker Off, they had they did not have an NES Classic, oh. which was sad. <laughs> oh I man, did, I was all I, I was all happy. I was ready like no, yes. No, absolutely not. But Super Potato has one for like two hundred fifty bucks. So if I ever <laughs> want it, I can pull the trigger. Unbelievable. Um, however, when I was at Booker Off, they had a mini Famicom available. Oh, okay. And it was only sixty five bucks. Nice. Now I already have a mini Famicom. Yeah. So, but I happen to know a dear friend of mine. Um, sadly, Josh, I know you're in Pennsylvania, but it's not you. But I have another friend in Pennsylvania <laughs> who was des- sorry, who was desperately trying to find an NES classic, and she she did not find it. Um, and uh, I, I picked it up for Aww. her. Very Aww. nice. It is, it, is curr- it is currently it is currently um, on the way by a USPS. <laughs> oh, good, <laughs> to Pennsylvania. Frank but not to you, Josh. I'm sorry. Oh, that's all good. As Frank, uh, as Josh now tracks it. <laughs> all right, Josh is going to intercept. Be awesome if it was his next door neighbor. <laughs> so, um, I doubt so that. I, def- I, I definitely, uh, I definitely um, had a successful shopping trip. I wound up with 15 games that I won't have time to play. That's a hell of a run. Good lord, good stuff. American Insane. Express must love you right now. <laughs> oh, my, Amer- my American Express is very happy. Holy cow! Um, so. Yeah, so but a very successful trip, and on top of it, now I have another place I can shop when I go to Japan. There you go. That's some in sweet September. stuff. My next See, trip's in September. Josh, when I, when I was on Victims and Villains there, and I was like, because of this show, I'm spending so much money. I got the new television to do the streaming. See what I told you? This is what happens to us. We've been dropping <laughs> more money on this show since we started it than we probably ever would have. You can't really say that. I mean, like you're. It's like it's like a passion of yours. It's oh, it's, it's a like passion. A, yes, it's yes, like it, I can't. It's, a, it's always a passion to go into massive debt for video games. Yeah, it's not like I can say, oh yeah, well, I bought all these all these comic books because you know of my show. No, <laughs> chances That's very are, true. comics I read probably have nothing to do with my show. <laughs> Which, by the way, Josh, when my when my comic book collection gets to Los Angeles, we'll have to we'll have to talk. <laughs> Yes, yes, we will. That's a crossover unto itself. That is a hell of a collection. Yeah, you can see the unboxing of all my comic books. (laughs) Do that live. That'd be awesome. Show some of the top ones that you got. Yes, and I'll make sure to give out my address so I can get robbed (laughs) properly. (laughs) Remember, I'm your shadow. I'm always behind you. (laughs) I gave out my license plate last week on the better half. That's why the hair (laughs) is always standing on the back of my neck, Josh. (laughs) Yes. Um, and I want to mention one thing real quick, because one of the games, Ant, that you got me on your last, last trip, I don't remember which one now. I think it was last, last, last. Who knows? Uh, Contra. And this is a game I've, I've talked about for a long time. Josh, I don't know if you ever played Contra or seen Contra for the NES. Way back in the day. Yeah, like, what... I, I, I remember playing, like, it, it actually, like, the, the arcade. Yep. It started version, in the arcade. So. It, one of my favorite NES games of all time. It's... They've never re-released it on Virtual Console. It, the only re-release of the NES version is on the DS game Contra Four, and but even that is a little because it's on the any it's on the DS, so it's kind of tough to play. It's not the same as playing it on television. So Aunt, I was gracious enough to pick me up a, a version, Japanese version, a Famicom version. So I was like, all right, cool. Obviously, I figured the text would be different because of <clears throat> excuse me, the because uh, of Japan. But the game, graphically, you know, I forget. It's like the Famicom was almost better, graphically, slightly m- better than the NES here in the U.S. Because when you boot, and I'll put post, uh, pictures on this, so when this podcast hits, you should be able to see the photos. First of all, the if you remember the iconic start screen of Contra, the Japanese version is animated. Huh. Like you see flames in the background of the of the logo, what I'm assuming is saying Contra in Japanese. Not only that, in between the levels, there's cutscenes, which the NES did not have. And when you go through the levels, it almost then shows the levels kind of like, remember every time you died in Ghosts and Goblins, it would show the map? Yes. That's what it does in Contra as well. Like, ah, cool. the graphic overhaul on those parts, it, they're so minute small details that it kind of really adds to the overall gameplay and i can't wait to really to really get into it and play it again before i just popped it in and take a look at it well when 
you know, when Japan is the one who's making the games, they're obviously going to make them better for themselves. <laughs> Clearly. Yeah, and I, I feel like that that's like a given because you look at where we are technologically now and where Japan is, like, it's... It, it's like looking into the future over there because that's just kind of the way that their culture has always been. Um, it's always been kind of ahead of its time. Yep. Really. Here's the problem. It was a chip is made in Japan. What are you talking about, Doc? All the best stuff is made in Japan. <laughs> well, this month has been very busy for all three of us um, for both shows because yeah, it was earlier, early July, what, July 7th, uh, a week ago. Um, that Netflix aired the four episode season one of the Castlevania anime, and uh, which we're going to get into greater detail this Friday on Victims and Villains uh, with Josh. But just very brief, very quickly, like a yay or a nay, did you enjoy the show? Yay. Okay. Yay. And a yay right here as well. We're going to get into more detail. Download Victims and Villains this Friday. Subscribe to them anyway. But you definitely want to, well, you always want to listen. But this week, uh, this Friday, we're going to talk into more detail about the anime. But we're going to talk about the games since we are the retro gamers. Um, Castlevania. Josh, I mean, how much, you're the guest here. How much history do you have with Castlevania, with, with the series, the gameplay? You know, kind of like, what do you, what was your earliest memories of it? Let's see, how long have we been friends? Like a while. five months. Yep. So five months. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I, oh, gotcha. It. Okay. That's just when you started talking to us. <laughs> so Larry, um, I, shared, I shared my screen with you to help you out because uh, uh, I know you still haven't finished Castlevania two. <laughs> and uh yes I anthony maybe um, that, yeah so i just sent you a, a map he did send me you. a map yes i'm looking at the castlevania 2 summons quest map castlevania 2 is the bane of the existence of my life and the life of many video game players it is a terrible game i i had no problem finishing it <laughs> i didn't say it was Actually, easy or hard I, I, said that, I had no problem finishing it multiple times when i was like 10 <laughs> <laughs> wow Josh, never play this game. Trust me. You you subjected yourself to a whirlwind of hell when you played Castlevania 64 on the live stream, which we'll get into in a moment. But <laughs> Castlevania 2 is a whole different breed. It's like the eighth level of hell. And it is it is the weaker of the oh, most Castlevania games. I of will, those, I will go with that. Of those three, the original three, it is definitely not a good one. Um, and yes, I know I said I would finish it. I never said when. Giving up. I we're, never still said, we're still waiting on, on that. We're still holding out on hope for that, man. We're getting there. Well, it's <laughs> it's one day. I'm not, well, I'm not holding my breath because I know how Larry is with video games, and the odds are he won't finish. <laughs> hey, if you listen if you listen to the better half, you already know that Frank has already committed to auditioning people for other co-hosts. So you can finish <laughs> wow, playing Castlevania. Not... <laughs> you go, go finish playing Castlevania 2. Let the fill in host co- go for a couple of weeks. <laughs> Do Castlevania 2. For my own... Okay. I'm getting booted off my own network. <laughs> you know, if there, if there was anybody who could pull that off successfully, I have faith in you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. Oh, well. Um, but, but I will eventually get back to it. Listen, I got a better setup now for streaming, so it's going to make me feel better in playing it. So That's very true. So, no, I'm... Uh, yeah, and I only, I, only, uh, I only needle you because I want you to get back to actually finishing it. Yeah, I will. I will. You know, and I can start my next game, whatever that is. Okay. Yeah, I guess we'll go back and forth on that one. Yeah, we had, we had initially talked about it, if you remember last year. We were going to alternate between retro games, and once you finish one, I would start another one. And then it took me a few months to finish Shining Force 2. It's taken me a few months to finish Castlevania 2. Yeah, well, Shining Force... Here. Shi- Shining Force... Josh, <laughs> quiet, <laughs> dude. You, Josh. Uh, uh, Shining Force 2, though, is an RPG, which is a much longer game, so you don't have that excuse. Castlevania 2 is kind of like an RPG. Yeah, but it's not nearly as long. No. This is true. Well, in any event, Josh, because of us, you are now entered into this world of Castlevania. Let me ask you this, though. Did you... I mean, did you know... Like, if if we never hooked up with these podcasts, do you think you would have watched the anime? Probably because I'm a really big fan of the Universal monsters mm-hmm. and Dracula being one of them. Um, 
the original 1931 film is probably in my top 10. Classic. Um, I love that movie. So to kind of get what that anime was, like I probably would have done it. And I did a little bit of research into it once the Netflix announcement kind of came in. And I was like, oh, man, this this sounds like a cool kind of thing. And, uh, you know, obviously wanting to know more about it and know more about this fandom. And so, yeah, maybe. Maybe not to the level I have now, but... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you wouldn't have played the games, but you would have definitely read yeah. into it. Yes. Right, right. But plus you also watch... You, you, you did watch the anime, and you're, you're better for it, because it was pretty good. Oh, so. it was amazing, yeah. Like I said, yeah. we're gonna, And it's based on Castlevania 3, so if you're going to play games, definitely play Castlevania 3, because that's where the game... That's where the anime... And we'll talk about that on the show, because there's a lot of... Sim, I mean, there's a lot of references. I don't know, Ant, you probably saw it of the references that they pulled from the game. Oh, yeah, there's no question so. about it. So um, I picked the right game to play this month for our Castlevania. You sure uh, did. How you ironic. Retrospective, so to speak. Yeah, well, you know, I'm usually, I'm usually like, you know, right on the, right on it. <laughs> right, on, right on the bubble of uh, what's hot <laughs> in Hollywood. I, I, look, man, I'm, I'm, I'm always on the cusp right there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. So uh, Castlevania is known to be extremely difficult any of the games um i've experienced it josh you've experienced it now firsthand and uh, well and said i've history. had no problem yeah. <laughs> dare you the first time you play castlevania is extremely difficult when you first pick it up it was difficult but you it know, stays I, difficult it really yeah, does I mean, it, yes it is it is a difficult they are difficult games they're definitely challenging but you know what but you just you just work your way through it just like any other video game you know the only the only games that are worth quitting on are Virtual Boy games because they all suck. Also true. <laughs> well, hey, <laughs> <laughs> you won't you, get your per diem check now. Uh, <laughs> see, now Rats. see with with the guest host Larry, you're you're outnumbered. So yeah, you know, know. just by voting there, <laughs> you can't win. Um, you know, there's the little elements of the game, like you know, like the hit. Mm. Every time you get hit, you get thrown back. Which and if you want to watch a perfect example of it. The very first episode of the Anger Video Game Nerd, which is a great series to watch, was yep. Castlevania 2. And that just like when you get hit and you get thrown back. And so the hit detection is kind of tough. And that's where the difficulty lies on top of just the, the villains. Uh, the, the enemies are just mm-hmm. not even the bosses, just the the regular level. Those Medusa heads are the worst things in any video game ever. Well, it's not just the Medusa heads, though. It's the Medusa heads combined with. The level that they're on because there are gaps in the walkway. Yeah, you're right. So you get hit by the Medusa head, you get knocked backwards, and then you fall to your death. Like in Castlevania (laughs) Three in the Clock Tower board. Yes. Oh, it's terrible. Yeah, it it is a nightmare. It's definitely a nightmare. (laughs) Nightmare fueled. Uh, Um, Josh, before we get into with our live streams, because me and you have already done them, um, did you pick up and play any Castlevania games before you played Castlevania Sixty Four? Yeah, I played. I played the first Castlevania, okay. and I played it pretty faithfully for like a month. And mm-hmm. I would make it to like a certain point in the first level, and then, like you guys were saying, that difficulty always uh, really kind of like would only get me so far. And then I'd be like, you know what, I could be doing other diff- other things right now. But I think <laughs> I I really enjoyed like I really enjoyed the concept of Castlevania, so I, that was the reason I kept coming back to it. And the first Castlevania, which is a classic, which is the one I, I started up playing first, was, uh, you know, just wanting to... Because I'd, I'd never played anything like that. And, and I think that back in the 8-bit days or the 16-bit days, it was games were a lot more simple. And they that's what made them so great. And I think that that's the, the concept behind Castlevania kill dracula like very straightforward you're right it's just basic kill dracula and all of his friends in the first one yeah (laughs) yeah and uh just that linear especially in the first game just the linear you got the whip you know you have some projectiles but you're right it's just kind of like and even with the projectiles you know those sub weapons come into play a lot because depending on which ones you have almost makes the game easier or harder like i just i refuse to use holy water uh but the dagger is my favorite weapon yeah i like the whip well, the whip. I mean, that's your main weapon. Yeah, totally. I know. But <laughs> I, was whip it good. The, I was never a big fan of the dagger. No? I always, I don't know. No, I always thought the um, the axe was fun. Yeah. It had that cool arc. arc on it, yeah. Yeah, it was fun. 
Um, so we've, on these last few Wednesdays, we've, uh, myself, Josh, and Anthony, have been live streaming Castlevania games. Uh, I kicked it off with what's known in the States here as Castlevania Dracula X over in Japan, originally on the TurboGrafx-16. Uh, I said on the Famicom, so I do stand corrected. But on the uh, TurboGrafx-16 was Ro- Castlevania Rondo of Blood, which is, besides Symphony of the Night for PlayStation... Rondo of Blood is probably one of the best Castlevania games that probably a lot of people have not played because it's really never... Dracula X came out here, but it really... They changed the game enough where it wasn't as good as the original. Um, I was able to download it. It is available on the Wii Virtual Console, so if anyone has a Wii or a Wii U, you can still download games on the Wii Virtual Console. They still let you download games. And if you're a fan of Symphony of the Night, you'd be pleased to know that Rondo of Blood is... A, uh, Symphony of the Night's actually a sequel yep. to Rondo of Blood. Yep. And so it's a direct sequel. Which I didn't realize until... Uh, until Because uh, I did look into that a little bit because I was reading about Rondo of Blood. Because I'm looking at it, and I'm playing... You hear me on the live stream. It starts off that first... Not even after the prologue. And which, you know what? Let's get into that. Like, Rondo of Blood, your very first in- entry into the game, you're fighting death. Gr- the Grim Reaper. Right off the bat, so yeah, cool. it, it throws you right in there without without yeah, anything. Um, but in the very first part of the first level, and you hear me on the stream, and I've played it a couple of times before. I'm going through, and I'm like, "This town looks familiar. It's the town from Castlevania 2. Mm-hmm. So cool. I'm trying to figure out where it's connected with that as well, because you can read. Uh, there's a signpost on the bottom. Obviously, it's in Japanese. I didn't get a chance to take a look into the translation of it. But I was kind of curious what that sign had to say. But um, it was just very cool how you how I saw immediately the links to prior games. Um, and then just the game itself is just ridiculous. Um, the difficulty level is is nuts. And it's a, the branching system on it. Because after the stream, I went back and I played a little bit more of it just to mess around. And I found different parts of the levels that brought me completely different directions. So that branching system was big time in Rondo of Blood. Yeah, it looked like watching you kind of go through it, it looked almost as if it kind of had a like historical feel to it mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Like the Egyptian feel where I kind of would know, like from what I know of Castlevania prior to Rondo of Blood is that it seems like a lot more of it kind of takes place in like... 1800s or like the 1900s so it's it was kind of cool to see like egyptian mythology and like history kind of brought into the that castlevania so Mm -hmm. like even seeing stuff like that and i loved the during the live stream where you get you got to this like one part and then out pops a uh a minotaur oh yeah and your reaction was classic <laughs> i was not expecting that minute uh, yeah and um i enjoyed watching you die <laughs> <laughs> and it's a it's a hell of a death scene too you die in the game yes. blood squirts all over the place yep. you know they they didn't release that here like that no way they should they should have definitely um but it was and it's funny because in the beginning if you watch again when you go back and watch the live stream in the very first level, I find like, kind of like a hidden room, which I go into. I kind of backtrack to get to the hidden room, and there's a pit with a you know with a, a, a stage going back and forth. But just like there was two candles with just hearts, so I'm like, what? What this? What is this? So I just moved on with the game. When I went back, apparently, and a lot of Japanese games kind of do this, like with it kind of springs stuff on you. You fall down in the pit, that's the branch. Like, that leads you to a completely different part of the level, and you move on with the game. So just by your instinct, my instinct was don't fall in the pit. Because you die. Exactly. Right. And Uh, because it happened later on in the stream, I did fall into a pit, but it brought me to a different part of the level, which I just figured, oh, that's weird. Okay. So then when I went back, now I'm going to be jumping into old pits I see. (laughs) Just going against my, uh, my better judgment. But that at well, the same you know, time, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, 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 Josh, all you. I was gonna say that at the same time, like that proves how much better of game designers that Japan is than us, is because, you, uh, like you were saying, like instinct for us in Western culture is you see a pit, in video games you die, that you get, you know, you're brought into a whole new, whole new level. Absolutely, and of course, it, it was a little bit of that 
graphic kick because of the Turbo Graphic 16. May have even been on the Turbo CD if I remember correctly. Um, but you're right. The way they designed that game, the way those levels went, it, it was. I'm definitely going to play it again, and it, it kind of it gave me that love again for the game. And uh, it's funny too because on there was a Castlevania game for the PSP, PlayStation Portable, which unlocked Rondo of Blood and Symphony of the Night. Um, and I remember playing Rondo of Blood at first. I really didn't like commit to it. I'm like, oh, this is just a fun, different game. Um, but I think it was the American version anyway. So, But this one on the Wii Virtual Console is the imported Japanese TurboGrafx-16. So definitely check it out when you get a chance. Very cool. Josh. Now, moving oh, on. Yeah. No, I was going to say moving on to Josh, who yeah. played... Uh... Castlevania 64. You Josh, now I soul. watched I watched I watched your stream and I have to say it was uh it was quite repetitive. <laughs> yes, yes it was. <laughs> Castlevania so talk about that. Yeah, How go was right. your experience? <laughs> what was your thoughts on it? So the cat uh when you guys watch it and if you guys uh missed out on any of the two live streams that I've done so far, you guys can go head over to YouTube and both streams are on the victims and villains page. And uh you guys can see how much better of a game Larry is than me. <laughs> um, that is, I guess, until Anthony plays. I don't know how plays. much that's saying, but it's saying something. <laughs> Castle, and, it's not, that... and, and, and negatively about you, Josh. I'm <laughs> yes. No, so, you, um... you jumped in with both feet, bro. Honestly, Castlevania. I've barely played Castlevania 64. So, But again, what are your thoughts about it? I mean, graphically speaking, it was an N64 game. So what do you think about, from playing Castlevania, the original, jumping into this 3D world? I, well, it's, like, yes. It's it's different. Um, it's, I still hold to PlayStation, like, partially. So, like, I adore the games, like, those uh, those games that are, you know, the three the early 3D kind of games. So, like, that to me, like, the, like visually speaking, like, it doesn't bother me because, like, those are the games that I grew up on. I kind of like grew up on those and then like went backwards to like the eight bit and the sixteen bit era. But visually speaking, I think it it's it was cool to kind of experience. It was it's, it's that here just to put a um, Castlevania sixty four was so bad, even graphically because there's a lot of glitches in the game that they came out with uh, what was the title Castlevania. I forgot I forgot the title of the second Castlevania game on the N64 which came out like a year later. Really all it is is a redone Castlevania 64. It's not even a sequel. Like uh Legacy of Darkness. That's right, Legacy of Darkness. Not even a sequel. It's just a fixed Castlevania 64. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, and I think me and Ant were actually talking about this after uh he had watched it. Like the controls on that are just really really bad. Oh, terrible. And yeah. They suck even more on a, an on an emulator, which was what I was playing. <laughs> which is well, you okay. Know what's funny about the about the uh, Castlevania N sixty four game. So it it actually got really good reviews when it really? first came Did out. Did it? I don't remember that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Castlevania sixty four. Uh, let's see. Just to slide through. Um, IGN gave it eight point two out of ten. Wow. Gamespot gave it eight point two out of ten. Okay. Uh, game ranking seventy two percent. Metacritic seventy eight. Uh, the okay. only the only uh, game pro four and a half out of five stars. <laughs> That's why they're out of business. Yep. Yeah. Game Revolution seems to be the only <laughs> one that may have gotten it right. They gave it a C minus. There you go. That's how that works. But for the most part, it got generally positive reviews. But also, you, uh, 3D games at the time were still kind of new. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think uh, if you were just putting stuff out in 3D, you automatically got a good review. <laughs> that is like, true. Hey, this is great. <laughs> Looking I, back on it now, not so much. Because um, I think it was ninety nine it had come out, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Okay. Did you find did, did you find January yourself twenty six, nineteen ninety nine. There you go. Did you find yourself really kinda retracing your steps in the game and and at any point did you start getting frustrated with it? You could be honest with us. <sighs> no. Okay. Because like it, it was like doing what we do with suicide prevention like I was like, all right, yes, this is a bad game and yes, <laughs> I am continuously dying, but <laughs> I'm gonna keep playing because it's a. I can I can spin this to be a message you of can. hope, and you sure as hell did, <laughs> and you are. And you so, <laughs> and you and you did, and you know what? And kudos to you for that. My question is, um, for your character selection, why you chose, uh, why you didn't try switching over to the other character? Because you had the option of two. I did, and I, 
I okay, so when I died the first time, it just it restarted me automatically. Yep. And I could have done the second character, but by the time I had already died the second time, I was like, I totally forgot about the, the, the other character. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. So I was just like, all right, I'm gonna put a pause right here, put a put a you know a little bit of you know that whole uh, hope section in here, and, and tell people that if they're struggling with suicide, that you know we would love to you know help them overcome it, connect them with counselors, and then I was like, all right, hit pause or un- unpause, and I'm just like. I wonder if they're like sitting here right now watching this and just being like, "Man, this guy sucks at what he does." <laughs> well, it's not that you—it's not that you suck at what you do. You just happen to suck at this specific game. <laughs> True story. That's all. And don't fool yourself. It, for it, this we can one. limit it to that game, right? We can just limit it to the game. So, speaking yeah. of sucking, uh, I get to—I'm up next with uh, <laughs> Castlevania Three. Yeah, man. Which is great since it is—it's uh, a great lead-in for the Castlevania anime series we'll be talking about on Victims and Villains. Yep. Since that's where they decided to start the story for the anime series, which is pretty cool. I personally feel Castlevania Three is the best of those three of the original three. Huh. Uh, I agree. I agree. Well, from what I understand, I agree with that. Of course, I've, I've gone on record saying I've never played Castlevania Three. Yeah, so. that's going to be fun. This is so. This is your so, legit first time ever playing it. Yeah, so I'm really looking forward to playing it because okay. uh, yeah, everybody told me it was the best one, but some odd reason I only played one and two. Um, <laughs> Maybe after finally getting through two, I was like, all right, that's it. I'm done. But, uh, <laughs> and then I jumped. I, I didn't play another one until Symphony of the Night. So. Oh, wow. So my question is, uh, so this, so N64, the Castlevania 64 was my first time playing this. Yes. And Anthony is going to be playing Castlevania 3 for the first time. How many times did you play Rondo of Blood before the live stream? Me? Honestly? I, 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 if I played it five times in the... How long has the Wii been out? Three or four years since it's been out? I mean, I rarely, rarely played it. Ant will tell you. I own stuff, but I usually don't play or watch it. Don't ask me why. Yeah, he just buys things to buy things. So I really... when I now I can, I can say the same now. <laughs> <laughs> when, when I played Rondo of Blood, it re- that was really my first time sitting down to play the game on a serious level. So we've all kind of... Then at that point, we've all kind of played games for the first time yes i've played rondo of blood but never in a serious manner like you i did, did on, uh, you did pretty decent for your first I, time i got else. up to the sixth level sixth stage game on i'll take nice. it nice i don't plan on getting that far on wednesday when i, <laughs> I when said, i uh, do that when i started the live stream i said do not expect to see the ending of this game <laughs> <laughs> I, I, and trust me I, w- I will promise the same come wednesday <laughs> and what and josh when you watch if you watch anthony play castlevania 3 you're gonna see a lot of the anime as far as characters because Castlevania 3 was the first Castlevania where you can play as multiple characters. You can yep. stumble across three different characters, a Lucard, Dracula's son. Um remember the, the in the anime the um uh the monk what they call him I forgot what they call him. Uh but the the uh the girl Sypha mm-hmm. she's She's a character from the game that you can play. And a third one, which I don't remember if, if he was in the anime, um, Grant. The, um, I don't think he was. I don't think he was either. He's a uh, basically almost like a like a pirate kind of sort of, and he can cling to walls and stuff. Cool. But that was that's what I love. It was fun to play, actually. That's what I love about Castlevania 3, because when you found one of these characters in a branching system of the game, you can, you can switch to them on a fly. You can only have one at a time. Um... But you can switch to them on, on the fly, and that's really that changed the whole dynamic of the Castlevania series, in my in my opinion. And that's the cool thing about it is that you um, like getting that quest aspect of it, and then you know being able to switch on command like that. Yeah, and when I was watching yeah. the anime, it really brought me back to the game. And you were gonna say. No, as I say, it's just really cool to have the option to play different characters, yep. you know. So they started introducing that into Castlevania games. It was really cool. No doubt. And uh, all right, so be on the lookout for uh, this Wednesday, which if you listen to the podcast, it drops tomorrow, uh, for Ant to play Castlevania 3. Give him some love as he uh, plays it. Of course, he's over in California, so I don't know what time he's doing yeah, give it. Me, yeah, give me some love, and uh, I'm definitely going to need some help. So uh, <laughs> just post, post- Post those cheats as I'm playing, people. <laughs> we'll, we'll definitely be there. We'll be watching. And uh, remember, this Friday, 
Subscribe to Victims and Villains anyway. It's a great, great podcast. Josh, you do a tremendous job with it. Some great interviews. You get some great people on there. Of course, the message behind it is absolutely tremendous. Uh, but hey, the Retro Gamers are going to be on this Friday, so why not give a listen as well? Yeah, and you can see how well they really know the Castlevania trilogy <laughs> or the whole franchise as a, as a because uh, we, we're in trouble. Normally, when we have guests on, it's normally you know tell us a little bit about yourself, tell us a little bit about your projects, but. Because we've had you guys on so much, we had to keep it fresh for you guys and <laughs> see how much you guys really knew about Castlevania. All right, and well, the challenge. Just don't, just don't fail me; it'll it'll reflect poorly on my former teaching career. <laughs> Rats. <laughs> the challenge has been laid. Tune in this Friday, victims and villains for the Castlevania anime crossover. So, um, just a fun fact, Josh. I want to throw at you before uh, I get into the retro spotlight for this week. Did you know? That there was never a Castlevania game on the Virtual Boy? <laughs> what? That's right. They I had would... never made it they never made a Castlevania game for the Virtual Boy. It wasn't enough so time. I got a I got a question. If there was a Virtual Boy Castlevania, mm-hmm. what color blood would Dracula bleed? <laughs> That's true, since uh, you can only see in red. <laughs> Listen, there's different shades of red, okay? It was able to div- give different shades of red. All right. All right, anyway. question for you. Go ahead. What All right, so so Larry, if you can see this, what shade is this red right here and what shade is the red on a- on Anthony's shirt? Well, Anthony's is like a red red and yours is more like a maroon. Yeah, right, now I'll... the virtu- now see the virtual boy was incapable of even doing that. Light, you know, medium, just, or dark red. That's it, what it, it did. Just, it was just it was just red, red, and red. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> what do we got uh, for retro ready. spotlight? Yes, yeah, so let's get to retro spotlight. So for this this week's retro spotlight. Use on uh, my own show. Since we since we're talking all things Castlevania, I thought it would be cool to do a retro spotlight on a Castlevania game. And if you've been listening to us for a while now, you will know that um, I've already done a retro spotlight on Castlevania Two Simon's Quest. Um, on the week that Larry announced he was going to be playing um, Castlevania Two, which I did. Um, of course, we are now we still have Larry trying to finish Castlevania 2, and that doesn't look like it's ever going to happen. Just so. just, just wait like another five, six years. It'll happen. Whoa, whoa! Yeah, it's perfectly <laughs> fine, yeah. It's perfectly Holy fine. Uh, it'll, Good thing I'm we'll drinking tonight. His, we'll let you on his tombstone. Never finish Castlevania 2. <laughs> so, He's gone so off to heaven to finish Simon's Quest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, man. That's that's awesome. Just make sure you have all of Dracula's parts when you do <laughs> <laughs> We'll bury you with them. Uh, so... <laughs> So this week's God. retro spotlight, I thought I would I thought I would focus on probably one of the um, one of the best, if not the best, Castlevania game in the series, which is uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Oh, absolutely. So, um, so Castlevania Ooh. Symphony of the Night, exactly. <laughs> um, and Josh, I do say, if you haven't played Castlevania Symphony of the Night, I strongly recommend you do. It's on PlayStation. I know, big, I know you're not a big gamer, but it's definitely worth playing. Um, no I can question. find one. Actually, uh, next they, time I go they are readily to... available. They are definitely readily available. Next Even time I go down to uh, Norfolk, I might you might get one because like down like down where we do a lot of ministry down there in Norfolk, there is like this ginormous um, video game place called Video Game of Heaven. Oh. And Ooh, when I was there like last time, yeah, yeah, when I was there last time, like I I, I picked up a couple games for like pretty inexpensive, so. Yeah, definitely, if yeah. you can find Castlevania. I mean, Symphony of the Night may be not that inexpensive. It may not be expensive, but it's well worth it. Trust me when I tell you. Mm-hmm. And we're going to learn all about it right now. Yes, you are, because I'm the one who does all the research. So, <laughs> Castlevania Symphony of the Night um, was developed and published by Konami, mm-hmm. who have uh, handled all of the Castlevania games. Uh, the original platform that it was on was the original PlayStation. Uh, it's come out on virtual consoles since then. Um, but it was originally released on the first PlayStation. Uh, in Japan, it was released March 20th of 1997. Hmm. Uh, it came to the U.S. about seven months later on October Teach. 2nd. Uh, yes, yes, uh, the, the yes teacher recognizes Josh. You have a question? Uh, was this the first game that was not on a Nintendo-based system? Uh, no, because uh, Castlevania um, Bloodlines was on the Sega Genesis. Okay. So, aha. <laughs> Yeah, that was a good one. Uh, moving on. <laughs> trying to just, Josh just is curious. To, Josh <laughs> no, is trying to no, your curiosity, you're trying to stump me. I know your game. <laughs> My students used to do it all the time too, and they failed miserably. 
That's that's for our show. I'm not going to bring it to your show. <laughs> no, it's, it's all right. It's all right. You can bring it. I accept all challenges. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, so it was released uh, October 2nd, 1997 in the U.S. and then in November of 97 all throughout Europe. So those were the release dates. Uh, as we said earlier while we were talking about Dracula X, um, Symphony of the Night is a direct sequel to Dracula X, which is also known as Castlevania Rondo of Blood. Um, as you know, uh, in Rondo of Blood, the lead um, the lead character was Richter Belmont. Mm-hmm. Richter Belmont plays a pivotal role in the Symphony of the Night story, even though you play as Alucard throughout the game. So the development for Symphony of the Night actually started with the intention of it being released on the ill-fated Sega 32X. Oh, really? So that... Yes, so this game was originally supposed to be part of the 32X collection. Um, Its original title um, for the 32X was Castlevania The Bloodletting. Hmm. Um, And there was actually a playable version of it created before Konami decided to move on and release it on the PlayStation. Interesting. So um, somewhere somewhere deep in the recesses of Sega or from one of their developers, um, there's a playable version of Symphony of the Night on the 32X. Yes, you John. could you could see it. I I think that with uh you know the recent announcement of the SCNS or the SNES as SNES, Larry yes. Larry likes to call it, uh you could <laughs> get the guy who pays could, attention to the shows. <laughs> thank you, Josh. <laughs> uh, I mean, like if Sega is gonna be you know kind of keep moving. To compete now, you have the Sega Forever. You, you're getting ready to release the Sega Genesis again. It is possible that we could see the Bloodletting uh, come out on a game, um, you know, just to compete with what Nintendo is doing with the SNES. Right, exactly. I mean, yeah, because the SNES Classic is going to be releasing Star Fox too. So I think uh, I think you have a good point. Like, it would be cool if. Um, Sega Forever did come out with an, a previously unreleased game, and a pre- not to mention a previously unreleased Castlevania game would be awesome. That'd be wild. So, yeah, even if it was just Symphony of the Night in a version, you yeah. know, in a 32X version. Um, so, moving on. So, when um, the development team moved on to doing the PlayStation version, uh, well, no, I'm sorry, for when they moved on to do Symphony of the Night, the original games, if you remember, like Castlevania 1 and 3 and... and um, uh, Bloodline specifically, you know how they have a stage by stage progression in those games. You yep. go through stage one, stage linear, two, so on and so forth. It's very very linear. Um, but they wanted, you know, so Konami wanted to um, the Konami development team wanted to make something that was a little more open world. So they actually they actually looked at the Legend of Zelda series and Super Metroid um, as inspiration to develop the whole castle for. Castle uh, for Symphony of the Night. You definitely see so, that. No, absolutely. And can, yeah. yeah, and you can definitely see that when you play through it. Um, the When the game came out in Japan, it was packaged with an art book containing a small manga based on the game and a soundtrack compiled from the previous Castlevania games. Really? So you didn't just get the game. You actually got it. Yeah, you got a, you got a nice little art book and cool. a CD with uh, Castlevania right, music on it. Next time you go to Japan, that's what I want. That's what you want? <laughs> There's his order. All right. You, you, you can just make sure you place your order um, you know, on an official order sheet. Um, Larry will provide <laughs> yeah. those to you. Man, it's a hump. You got to get it notarized. Oh, my God. Yeah. Right. yeah and and when, once it's cleared, uh, I, will, uh, I will shop for you. Cool. So, I know a guy. Um, <laughs> yes. So, when, um, so, obviously, when the game was released in Japan, they had their uh, – They had um, Japanese voice actors, and then when it was released in North America and Europe, they had to redub everything in English. So they had a whole different set of actors. What is a man? Um, In terms of the sales for the game, you'd actually be very surprised to know that worldwide sales were not as large as you would think. Really? Uh, 1.2 million copies sold worldwide. That's it? That's it. That's it. I would have expected it to be a lot more. Was there maybe Um, not that many PlayStations? Well, I'm not... Uh, to be honest with you, like I said, I'm not entirely sure, but here's here's what I um, here's what I discovered. The UK release um, sold very sparsely mm-hmm. and was actually discontinued after two months. Wow! So this was this uh, when this game first came out. The sales were actually pretty weak. It took word of mouth 
um, for uh, huh. for it to actually become popular. It became a, it became more of a cult classic after its initial release. So um, so if you have an original copy of the game, which I don't think I do, I think I have the greatest hits version. Oh, uh, if you have uh, the hmm. I. Yeah, if you have the original release of the game, it actually may be more valuable than um, the other versions oh. because it didn't sell as well. Not that I have the jewel case uh, anymore. Well, you, you kind of need the jewel case, too. It's, <laughs> yes. It helps for that. Um, All in a book. Yes. And then the um, the soundtrack of the game was actually released on CD uh, April 9th of 1997. So a couple of months after the game came out, they actually released... The CD because the soundtrack one of the is probably one of the best soundtracks ever made for a video game. Absolutely, Absolutely one fantastic. of the best. And and on a side note, you could if you have a copy of Symphony of the Night on PlayStation, you can put the disc in your CD player, and it will play tracks. That's not awesome. not regular. Like I think it's only one track that plays. I think just one long song, but you can do that. Actually, a lot of PlayStation games you can do that with. Um, yeah, so thank you for s- stepping on some of my information, Larry. Oh. Uh, so <laughs> look at you trying to jump into Retro Spotlight. It's so cute. I had, I had a... we'll Let him have his moment. We'll fix this in post. No, you won't. We don't, no, we don't have to fix it. <laughs> we don't have to. If you listen to, to the interview with post. Anthony, you know how much I can fix in post. <laughs> That's very That's true. also true. But uh, you don't have to fix this in post. You can you can have your little moment. But, Let's uh, do this. I, hey, I, Ant. I, I, will, I will still draw on. Can, yes. can you, uh, is there any other way you can listen to the soundtrack besides buying a separate <laughs> CD? Yes, actually there is. Um, the soundtrack was re-released on iTunes in December oh. of 2007, <laughs> 10 years after the game's original release. So you can actually buy it on iTunes. Is there a third way? <laughs> no. No, there is not. <laughs> and anybody who says otherwise is lying. <laughs> By the way, I'm going to iTunes right now. <laughs> uh, so I, I'm moving on. Okay. So moving on from the from the uh, from the soundtrack that's only that's only available two ways. Um, <laughs> Listen, I, I've been drinking. I've been drinking wine all night. I'm trying to get sophisticated. I may be a little buzzed. So uh, here's an interesting uh, tidbit, and I'm curious to see if you know if you know this because I didn't when I read it. Okay. But when the um, Game, when the game came out, the press was drawing comparisons between the gameplay of Symphony of the Night with the gameplay of Super Metroid, which makes sense since they used that as inspiration, that they actually coined a term called Metroidvania. Have you ever heard that? Yes, actually I have, but I didn't know where it came from. I just thought it was the style of game. They just Someone just mentioned it. Well, no, that's exact. That's kind of exactly what well, guess, it is. Yeah. But it's basically a game that plays like Symphony of the Night and Metroid is considered like Metroidvania. Yeah, that's that's so. because yeah, no, that's pretty sweet. I'm afraid to talk now. Um, no, that's pretty cool. No, you can talk. No, Just I, talk about I'm, the I'm, I'm totally... <laughs> um, no, because uh, that that totally makes uh, sense. Yeah. Um, so uh, some uh, interesting awards uh, I want to run down really really quickly for Symphony of the Night because um, it it it. It was, you know, it was definitely heralded by most, uh, most um, game magazines and uh, professionals. So, really quickly, 1997, it was PlayStation Magazine's Game of the Year. 1998, Electronics Gaming Monthly named it PlayStation Game of the Year. Nice. Um, Electronic Gaming Monthly also, um, in its 100 Greatest Games of All Times, it's listed in fourth place. Wow. Uh, GameSpot listed on their greatest games of all time list. Uh, they don't have them numbered. Okay. Uh, in 2005 on IGN, it placed 16th in their top 100 games of all time. Nice. In 2001 on Game Informer, 24th for their top 200 video games wow. ever. Wow! Wow! Game Zone, best Castlevania title ever made. Agreed. On Games Radar, the second best PlayStation game of all time. Wow! Second best behind Metal Gear Solid. So okay, okay, I can see uh, that. 2009, Edge listed it as 35th of the top 100 best games to play today. I don't even know he played games. Okay. Nice. No, not that Edge. Oh, okay. uh, and, <laughs> and GamePro listed it number 10 for the 15 greatest video games of all time. Wow. So, Those are some high praises. Now, yeah, that's a lot of high praises. And here's some, here are some other quick little fun facts about uh, Symphony of the Night. Um, did you know that Alucard's stats are influenced um, by the manner in which Richter killed Dracula in the introduction of the game? Really? Really? Yes. So if you defeated Dracula as Richter at the start of the game within the first minute, 
Um, he actually has different stats. Wow. That's pretty sweet. When you start the game. Um, See, what happened, hmm. just, just I don't yeah. know if you're aware of it, Josh. Basically, when you start the game, you actually start the game with a Belmont. It's almost like you're starting the game at like the end of the previous game. Like well, right. probably the end of Rondo of Blood. That's now exactly think about what it. you're doing. It, what you're doing is Symphony of the Night starts with the end of Rondo of Blood before you get into Symphony of the Night. Yeah. So you, so you're at the base yeah. of Dracula's castle. You walk up. You fight Dracula. I've never beaten Dracula. I didn't think you were supposed to beat Dracula. I always thought you had to die, but I never realized nope. that about the stats. That's pretty sweet. Oh, you you never beat Dracula? No, I didn't think you were supposed. to. I never no. really bothered trying. Oh. I mean, I tried, I always but beat him. <laughs> I've never been true. Blue and, sequel. Yes. So well, guess um, who's going so, back to play tonight? Right. So how quickly you beat him actually affected Alucard huh. um, nice. and his stats. I so why my stats um, stink? Here, here's a little deja vu moment. But if you happen to place the game CD in a <laughs> you know CD player, it reveals <laughs> a hidden song on track two. Um, and also. Uh, just so you know, when you do start track two, Alucard actually gives you a warning not to place the game in the CD player yes, before, I do yeah. before the, the actual... I mean, I've never heard sounds. of that. Wow. Yeah, that, that is brand new information for Whoa. Larry. He's never heard that before. Man, that's amazing. Okay. <laughs> so, um, other little bits in the game that are kind of cool little nods, but um, when you go into a save room in the game, the sound that you hear in the save room is Alucard's heartbeat. That's what um, that is. That the sound in the game oh. room is his heartbeat. But what you well, since you didn't know that, um, I thought you knew that. But uh, know, since you didn't know, know that, what you also might want to know is, depending on what level of health you have, the sound would be fainter if your health level was lower. Huh. So, I'll yeah. Go back so to the heartbeat was. Right. Yep. Uh, in 1998, Symphony of the Night was ported to the Sega Saturn in Japan hmm. only. And in that version, um, you um, you know the character Maria, Richter's girlfriend Maria. Yes. Okay, so Maria is a playable character. That's in cool. The Sega Saturn version. Um, she's a fully playable character, and she's a boss fight. Really? Oh wow. Yep. You fight her, and she joins you. Huh. Um, Rick, Richter is also available to play at the start of the game. On so Saturn, get, man, I gotta get a Saturn. On the Saturn now. game. Yep. Although the Saturn game was actually very buggy. Oh. Um, so just something to keep in mind. Uh, the Saturn game also included, um, exclusive items and, uh, two new areas in the game to play. Really? With, with bosses. Wow. Yep. Uh, moving on, mm-hmm. um, uh, the, now this game came out on Xbox Live and on PSP, mm-hmm. um, and, I don't know if you realize this, but at the end of the game, when you beat it, I don't know if you beat the game because you tend not to do that. But when you beat the game, um, <laughs> there's, a, there's a theme. There's a theme. There's a theme song they created specifically for the game called "I Am the Wind." <laughs> um, but on the uh, Xbox Live and Play, uh, PlayStation Portable, they did not use uh, the song. So money. Josh, did you have a question? No. <laughs> okay. Um, Please hold all questions till the ride yes. is over. Yes, please hold all questions. So, um, one of the other cool things about Symphony of the Night, and this is the last piece of information I'm going to share, um, but one of the other cool things about it is that once you get halfway through the game and you think the game is over, all of a sudden the castle flips and you have to start doing the castle backwards. Right? <laughs> that's, upside a, down. that's annoying when you first learn that. Yes, and you go upside down. Now, um, in the game, there's a glitch where Alucard can explore the roof of the castle, oh. and you can increase the map percentage. Because when you play through the game, there's a map percentage, and you can get to you can get to 200. percent Yep. Because 100 percent gets you through the castle right side up, and then 200 percent gets you through it upside down. Um, but if you get onto the roof of the castle through the glitch, you can actually achieve 200.6 oh, percent. Oh, 206. That was 202. Okay. Yeah. 200.6%, and then players have actually managed to do other things in the castle that have increased the percentage up to 400% and higher. What? Yeah. Wow. I have no idea. I have no idea what they do. That's weird. Um, but it's possible to do that. Huh. Um, I'm sorry. That was going to be my last bit, but I have one other thing I wanted to say. Okay. Now, uh, Symphony of the Night, um, as it stands on the PlayStation, has four different endings depending on what you do in the game. Jesus. There's multiple endings. Four different endings. However, on the PlayStation version, there was audio for a fifth ending found. 
Um, uh, and in that ending, um, uh, Maria saves Richter, but then Shaft, who's another character, um, <laughs> actually tur- turns Maria into a demon right after she saves wow. Richter. Wow. <laughs> so apparently that was a planned ending that was never created for Symphony of the Night. And that is this week's Retro Spotlight, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. I hope you all learned something from me and not from Larry. And this week in gaming, what do we I, got, bro? That wow, is now what, what our is new intro into this week. <laughs> I am, I am isolating it. It will go in each and every week that we do this week in gaming. Wow. And, and Josh, thank you very much for for caring so much into you know putting the extra effort in. Larry just kind of just fumbles into it it's what like, oh man what's, in, not, what's this week in gaming absolutely not i i've done stuff like You're that be less interested. how dare you <laughs> all right so let, let's see what's going on this week in gaming hint hint nothing virtual boy um <laughs> Rats. Not, just wait not that i would ever mention i think i've only, i think i've been the only one to do a virtual boy the two times i've done this week in gaming wait um, yeah and that will be the only person who will ever do it so yes wait. josh any sharp x Oh, uh, oh, we'll find out. No, we, we'll you know, we can't put the cart before well, the horse. Yeah, I was just going to say, you're, I'm going to keep you in suspense. I've already done that um, with the with the soundtrack to Castlevania Symphony tonight. You see where that led us. Yes, exactly. So, um, <laughs> so and based on Josh's intro, we're going to do this squeak in gaming history. <laughs> 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 all right, so we're gonna we're gonna swing all the way back to 1981. 1981, the Game & Watch widescreen version of Octopus. <laughs> the widescreen. I didn't even know widescreen was invented in 1981. <laughs> it's, it's Japan. They invented everything That's like 50 true. years before we got it. So, Game & Watch widescreen Octopus, 1981. Cool. Okay. Uh, jumping a few years to 1985, on the Famicom in Japan, there was a game called Door Door. <laughs> Let me Very guess nice. what you had to do in it. Uh, wait, you, you, wait. Were you yeah. a Mormon? No. <laughs> or a Jehovah's Witness. Nope. But now I want a game like that. <laughs> <laughs> Knock on doors and you have to answer whatever question they say correctly in order for them to let you in. Normally when this yes. Mormon knocks on the door, it gets closed on him. <laughs> Slammed is the word. Slammed. <laughs> Jumping to 1986, uh, also in Japan, pro wrestling on the Sega Master System. Ooh, okay. Yep. Um, jumping two years to 1988, uh, also on the this is on the Famicom Disk System, ah, not the okay. Famicom, but the Disk System. Donkey Kong Jr. Did you find um, the Disk System? You never, you didn't pick it up, did you? Well, no, because I went to book off and they didn't have oh, okay. old systems. Gotcha. So next time I go Super Potato, have a Famicom Disk System ready for me. I am purchasing. Cool. And apparently, I'm also looking for Symphony of the Night with the uh, manga <laughs> art book and soundtrack. Yes. <laughs> Once I get the request form. <laughs> 19, staying in 1988, uh, this is my favorite uh, favorite uh, game title for the week uh, okay. on the Famicom in Japan. Kid Cool, with K's, Kid Cool and the Quest for the Seven Wonder Herbs. <laughs> what kind of cool I, is he? You know what? I, know, I know what Kid Cool was doing with those. <laughs> those are some strong Wonder Herbs. That's right. Uh, jumping to 1990, and this one I thought was interesting. Ooh. 1990 on the Famicom. In Japan, Altered Beast. Huh. Really? Nice. Yeah, so apparently Sega and Nintendo may have shared some stuff. Maybe. Uh, in Japan. They didn't do that here. No, not at all. Um, 1992, also in Japan, Final Fight for the Sharp X 68000. Yes! yes! I told you not to do that. What? <laughs> well, listen, until I have a button that I can press to do it otherwise. All right, you know how you were talking about your editing skills? Edit that out. <laughs> Thank you. Jumping to 1994, Mega Man 5 on the Game Boy was released in Japan. Great. That Mega Man on Game Boy is absolutely... I I will put it up against any of the NES Mega Mans because that one was its own game where the Mega Man 1 through 4 on Game Boy just took basically the same bosses from like two Mega Mans and combined them. This one was a completely original game. Absolutely phenomenal. Thank you for that. Um, also released in uh, 1994, the ever elusive game that I've been trying to get uh, in the states, but it was released in Japan on Sega CD, Shining Force CD. Oh, that's supposed to be the game of all games. Yep. 
I've um, easily seen a goal for 300. Keeping with our theme uh, of this week's episode, in 1995, Castlevania Dra- Dracula X came out on the Super Famicom. There we go. In Japan. So happy anniversary for that. So that makes it 22 years old this week. That's an old game. It's an old game. Um, also in 1995... Um, and this was released in the United States on DOS. <laughs> if you had DOS, we had a game called Battle Cheese. Yes. <laughs> Battle Cheese. And oh, no, man. it's not it's not about cheese battling each other. So um it was some weird well, no. I'm no, sorry. it's cheese battling each other. I'm watching it's it. It's battle now. cheese. Yep. Yes, yeah, so you get you get to choose between blue cheddar, cream, and Swiss. <laughs> That may be the greatest video game of all time. You can you, cheese, hold everyone. on. Your weaponry is Gouda guns, Limburger bombs, re, uh, recon parmesan for reconnaissance. Oh, this is fantastic! <laughs> wait, yes. wait. You got any pepper jack cheese? Um, that may be a later level. Because I feel like if it if it does like explosive stuff to your bowels, it could do explosive <laughs> stuff to other yep. other cheese products. Oh man! What happens if? Well, yeah, I was just gonna say, what happens if you're a lactose intolerant person? <laughs> I do not like cheese, That's and dangerous. I will not deal so with it. So basically, battle cheese plays like Risk, but with cheese. That's awesome. Okay, battle cheese. Now I kind of want to buy it. <laughs> uh, so, but we're gonna move on to uh, 1997. Uh, on PlayStation in Japan, uh, actually one of my uh, one of my games uh, favorite games on the PlayStation, even though most people don't like it. Clock Tower, uh, survival horror game, kind of a slasher. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ten different endings. Good lord! I know. I mean, I, I and you know there were so many times I would play through the game. I think I unlocked maybe four endings, <laughs> and somehow I would always like wind up getting the same ending over and over again. It's weird. 1998 Mission Impossible for N64 in the U.S. Okay. Uh, cool game. Uh, jumping to 2001 on the Game, game Boy Color, Dragon Warrior 3. Good one. Uh, on the Game Boy Advance in Japan, Mario Kart Super Circuit. Oh, that game rocked. All the Mario Kart games yeah. were awesome. I don't think there was a bad one in the bunch. No, not really. Uh, to 2003, PlayStation 2 in Japan, Mega Man X7. Okay, yep. Yeah. Uh, also on the GameCube in Japan, we got the Pokemon Channel. Oh. Oh, I remember that. Okay, yeah, I remember yep. that. Yeah. Remember that? Yep. Uh, 2004, um, on Xbox, PS2, GameCube, Game Boy Advance, and Windows, we got uh, a video game based on one of the worst superhero movies ever created, Catwoman. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, was it did, – uh, did you actually, like, hopefully neither one of you played it? No, I never we, played neither it. of us played it, but I can almost guarantee you that the game was probably better than the movie, and that's not saying much. <laughs> Um, also on GameCube in Japan in 2004, <laughs> Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door. Great game. Great game. And uh, we're going to end in 2005 with a shout out to a country we don't normally mention here. Shout out to Singapore, because in 2005, you guys got World of Warcraft. Wow. All right. On Windows. Congratulations, so that's Singapore. The, that's, okay. the, that's this week in gaming. For the record. Yes. Amazon nor eBay. Recognizes the title "Battle Cheese." <laughs> that that is a travesty. <laughs> Quick, Battle go to Steam. Cheese should be Battle Cheese should be available on every major console and computer <laughs> yes, it should. ever created. Long live <laughs> Battle Cheese! <laughs> that is awesome. Um, Battle Cheese aside, um, that's that's pretty good trivia. And normally we end on this week in gaming, but you know, with Josh with us this week, I thought we'd kind of end on something a little different. Um, Why are you changing things? Because I like to. You know, you, you kiss my cheddar. <laughs> <laughs> Break out the old Gouda gun. <laughs> that's we're gonna have some Battle Cheese right here on, on, on the retro gamers. I feel like it's going that way with all these cheese puns. <laughs> that's very true. <laughs> So, um, so I found this this trivia. Um, it's from GameSpot. Uh, it's a little trivia thing that I thought would be kind of fun to end with with three of us. It's um, fifteen trivia questions only hardcore Nintendo fans will know. Wait, really? Is it cheesy? Oh, I'm. This whole segment's gonna be yeah. All right, absolutely. Cool. So uh, I'm I'm voting for some mozzarella. So, <laughs> so uh, basically, how this is gonna work is um, fifteen questions. Uh, multiple choice, A, B, C, D. Uh, each one of us have cards, A, B, C, and D, which we will hold up when we think we have when we have the answer we're thinking of. 
um, because I don't trust either one of you as far as I can throw you. So I need to see well, the answer. And for, any, and, and for anybody listening to the podcast right now, we know it's not live. So, but you can make cards with A, B, C, D on it, and you can just hold it up to nothing. You sure can. So, uh, so I got my cards here. Ant's got his cards, and uh, I know Josh has his. So there we go. Um, I don't know what Josh is doing right I don't now. Know, I'm a little worried. worried. Yeah. Josh is doing stuff for Instagram right now. Nice. I oh, like boy. it. Josh is always thinking. I'm telling you. He is always <laughs> thinking about social media. Good I, stuff. I know. Just, just like that detective on Arrow that he reminds me of. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. Maybe one day I'll actually get to meet Paul Blackthorne. If you've ever heard Paul Blackthorne uh, actually talk, side note, dude is extremely British. <laughs> and he played a doctor in Dumb and Dumber 2. Oh, did he? Wait, Dumb and Dumber 2 or oh. Dumb and Dumberer? No, Dumb and Dumber 2. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Uh, really? I'll have to check that out. He had a full head of hair and a British accent. So. Hey, well, he should have a British accent. <laughs> yes, he did. All right, so trivia game. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to read out the question. I'll read out the four answers. We will all each hold up the card, what we think the answer is. I will keep oh, tally. And uh, the winner will receive a um, gift certificate to Chuck E. Cheese. Yes! <laughs> Do not even mess with me right now. <laughs> Do not even mess with me. Uh, there are no Chuck E. Cheeses, I don't think, on Long Island anymore. So, <laughs> Can I just get, can, can I just get like, a five-pound cheese wheel of cheddar? <laughs> we'll get bragging rights going into Victims and Villains. Josh, you must love Chuck E. Cheese. I do. Okay, fair enough. I don't blame you. <laughs> it's a great... And the only place I ever found... Baby Pac-Man. So. True story. Very nice. All right. So here we go. Question number one. What uh-huh. is the best-selling Nintendo exclusive game of all time? Nintendo exclusive. Was it A, Duck Hunt, B, Super Mario Brothers, C, Mario Kart Wii, or D, Wii Sports? Whenever you're ready, feel free to hold up your cards. We got Josh. Yeah, hold up yours. I'm holding it up. All right, so D's all around. Oh, this is going to be horrible. Uh, okay, so Wii Sports. We're all answering Wii Sports. Answer is Wii Sports. So we each get a point. Woo! All right. By the way, well, when that's I... only because well, that's also because Wii Sports came with the Wii, and exactly. the Wii is the best-selling console of all time. There you go. That's how you think about it, uh, Josh. If you never, if you didn't know, when I was growing up, my lifelong dream was to be a game show host. So I did get to live it briefly in high school, and I'm living it again today. And based on question number one, you can see why he's not a game show host. Yeah, I was, about to say, I was like, you need some, uh, you need some more like umph in your voice. All, all yeah. right, you want umph? I'll give you umph. All right, listen. If the brain game taught me anything, it's how I can enunciate for a game show. Question: Challenge, challenge your inner Bobby. Bobby, Bob Barker. Yeah, Bob Barker. All right. So, question number two: Which of the say Bob Newhart? (laughs) (laughs) What about uh, Gina Gene Rayburn? Match that works. There we go. Question number two: Which of the following games did Mario creator Shinjiro Miyamoto not design? Which game did he not design? Was it Donkey Kong, Kid Icarus, Excite Bike, or The Legend of Zelda? A, Donkey Kong, B, Kid Icarus, C, Excite Bike, D, The Legend of Zelda. Which game did Shin- Shinjiro Miyamoto not design? I have my answer. All right, I have. B, Josh has C, and Ant, I have to go to you, C as well. All right. Oh, boy, here we go. This is going to change the whole thing. And the answer is Kid Icarus. Oh, very nice. All right. I take the lead. I think you're cheating. I I swear to God I am not cheating. I did not look at these ahead of time. If you... If you win, we're automatically going to accuse you of cheating well, that because is, you're the one asking the questions, I, and you also have the answer. Not, no, I only see the answer when I move on to the next page. That's why it takes a few seconds. So, share, share your screen and prove it. I, I there are other things <laughs> open on my screen. I'd rather not share right now. So, mm-hmm. question number three, or that I would like to see right now. <laughs> That'll be on the better half. <laughs> question number three. Question what number porn three. Site does Larry have open on his? How desktop? dare you? This is, we're on iHeartRadio. Watch your language. <laughs> Bad enough with Astro Tit. <laughs> that was a great game. That you know what? And an Astro Tit Battle Cheese 
dual pack. Look, <laughs> look. <laughs> Celery was the better game, all right? Was... <laughs> Triple pack. Get yourself some Celery, Astro, Tit, and Battle Cheese all in one pack. Question number three. What is the first game with Princess Zelda as a playable character? What game Ooh. did Princess Zelda finally become a playable character? Was it A, Zelda, Wand of Gamelin? B, The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time? C, Super Smash Bros. Melee? Or D, Super Smash Bros. Brawl? In a moment, we'll throw it up to Charles Nelson Riley. All right, Josh has B, Ocarina of Time. I have... I see Ant's going to wait for me. All right, me and Ant both have A, Zelda, Wand of Gamelin. The answer is... Load. A, Zelda, Wand of Gamelin. So me and Ant get a point on that one. I was going to say, Ant, you want to tell Josh what that one's all about? Uh, The Wand of Gamelin was one of two games created for the Philips CDI when Nintendo got... um, Nintendo made a deal um, to have Philips create a cd attachment to their super nintendo um but when that and during that deal they had um they had also struck a deal that they can they would loan some of their characters to philips so um when that deal fell through with nintendo philips still had the rights to make uh legend of zelda games for the cdi so they created two really really bad terrible zelda games absolutely terrible, De- terrible. nintendo refuses awesome to <laughs> yeah pretty much yeah All they right. played like dragon slayer but worse Question number something. Uh, four. Question number four. All right. Wow. Can't what? count game show. Game show. <laughs> I lost track. <laughs> oh, actually, I can't keep track because I've got every answer right. Uh, so, question number four. What is the best-selling Nintendo handheld of all time? Was it A, the Nintendo Game Boy? B, the Nintendo Game Boy Advance? C, the Nintendo DS? Or D, the Nintendo 3DS? Uh, I noticed that the Virtual Boy wasn't an option. <laughs> well, it depends on who you ask. If it's if it is, is an actually e? a controller or not, or or yeah. if it, which ugly visor was sold the best? <laughs> <laughs> which best-selling Nintendo handheld of all time? Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, DS with 3DS. All right, Ooh. Josh says the Game Boy Advance. I'm going 3DS. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go backwards and go to the original Game Boy. Ant's going to Game Boy. The answer is... Wow, we're all wrong. The Nintendo DS. Oh, Holy see. cow, no points on that one. Wow. Interesting. Wow, DS. Huh. You know, I at first I would have went Game Boy, but I just figured because of the times, I figured more people, more kids would buy it. That's why I went 3DS. So, I, my, my gut said Microvision, but that wasn't an option. <laughs> All right, question number five. Which pro baseball team did Nintendo become majority owner of in 1992? Nintendo actually owned a baseball team in 1992. Was it the Seattle Mariners, the Oakland A's, the Kansas City Royals, or the Tampa Bay Rays? Seattle Mariners, Oakland A's, Kansas City Royals, or the Tampa Bay Rays? I liked it better when they were the Devil Rays. We all say A... Josh was last going up on that. I think he may be playing the odds. <laughs> and the answer is A, the Seattle Mariners. <laughs> well, considering the fact that Nintendo of America is located in Seattle. That is very um, true. Wow, Josh, you didn't take long at all to post that, did you? <laughs> Multi's like asking. I love it. I love it. All right. Uh, question. Moving, moving right along. We're going to pick up some pace here. Question number six. Oh, sh- Language. <laughs> That is not becoming of a game show host. We are going to have to skip this one because the question is, what game is this screenshot from? And that's not going to work. So. Well, that doesn't help. No, so we'll skip that one. Uh, by the way, it was it's a... Uh, it's not stuff. Virtual Boy. <laughs> no, okay. it's not. Move on. Just it's move on. It's clearly Mario Kart Double Dash. So. All right. Okay, move on. Okay, so which Nintendo game caused enough injuries in children to result virtual in boy. an Virtual 80- Boy. Virtual Boy. Virtual Boy. Virtual <laughs> Boy. That's not a game. That's a system. Which I don't Nintendo know what that is. That's not a system. game caused enough injuries in children to result in an eighty million dollar settlement? Was it A. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, B. Super Smash Brothers, C. Mario Kart sixty four, or D. Mario Party? We've actually I'm, talked about this I'm, in the past. 
I feel like I'm waiting on like Mario Tennis coming through. Honestly, right. All right, we all again <laughs> D's all around. So, answer is as we've talked about before, Mario Party. We all yep. get a point on that one. That's what caused the gloves to come out. Look, though, my hand's finally healed. What the power? <laughs> Oh, I wish the power glove. No, they actually had to release. Oh, wait, am I? They, they, had, they had to release special <laughs> gloves with a pad in the middle because the first Mario Party, you would have to rotate the the stick a lot, so people would just use their palm and rotate the stick on the on the N sixty four. And just ripped all their skin off. Yeah, it was terrible, hysterical, Ooh. but terrible. Yeah, I had a nice hole in my hand for like a year. <laughs> what Go is on. the first? I'm moving on. What is the first Nintendo game to feature Mario? What is the first Nintendo game to feature Mario in it? Was it Mario Brothers? Tennis, Donkey Kong, or Wrecking Crew. Give me what. Give me the ones with like the actual like A B C. D. Oh, I'm sorry. A Mario Brothers. B Tennis. C Donkey Kong. D Wrecking Crew. Okay. You said this was the first game to feature Mario. Feature Mario. Okay. And hold on. I get. Why do you always keep coming? Okay. We all say C Donkey Kong. We just talked about this recently, and it is C, Donkey Kong. All right. So we are at right now, Josh with four big points on the board, Anthony with five big points, and of course yours truly with six. All right, the cheater. Has six. I, I am not the cheater. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm see? still waiting on the virtual boy questions. Right, if one comes on. up, that's going to be hysterical. What is the name of Nintendo's first ever Game & Watch title? This is a tough one. Was it A, Ball, B, Oil Panic, C, Egg, D, Mario Brothers? Repeat the question. Sure. Games. What is the name of Nintendo's first ever Game & Watch title? A, Ball, B, Oil Panic, C, Egg, D Mario Brothers. Josh goes D. I say A. Oh boy, Anthony says B. All right, remember your answers. The answer is ball. <laughs> that's that's me. <laughs> now, Larry, we're gonna have to have a talk. I swear to God, I am not cheating. For for the listeners out there, Larry is the one in right now in control of the questions. <laughs> All right, if you would be so kind, and the one that found the quiz. All right, if you would be so kind to send me a link to said quiz, I would like to continue the questions from my end to make sure that this is fair. <laughs> We're good. Don't worry about it. It is fair. All right, probably here we go. like studied him. I did not. I swear on my I am, god, son. I, I believe I am. I am about to sign off here. <laughs> All right, here we go. I don't even know what question we're at now. Which film inspired the enemies in Nintendo's Metroid series? Was it A, Star Wars, B, Galaxy of Terror, C, Predator, D, Alien? <laughs> we all say D, Alien. There you go. Alien it is. All right. I'm, uh, okay. Oh, here we go. What was the first NES game to use the Konami code? First NES game to use the Konami code. Was it A, Contra, B, Life Force, C, Gradius, D, R-Type? Now, I'm trying to think of release dates here. Uh, oh, what came first? I don't know. Which one came first? <laughs> All right. <laughs> What's that copyright date on there? All right. Josh says B Life Force. Anthony says C Gradius. Actually, I say C Gradius as well. The answer is survey says Gradius. Hey, Josh, you're holding up well. Don't worry. For a novice, for someone who yeah, doesn't never play really games, well. you got Look, five see? points. Not Look, bad at all. Gradius. I honestly was going to go Contra because I thought Contra came out first. No, Contra came out, I think, in 87 or 88. That's, yeah, then I thought about it more. That's what I figured. Okay. Oh, here we go. All right. Here's a good one and very good trivia as well. 
what was Nintendo's original line of business when the company was founded in 1889? Yes, Nintendo was founded in 1889. (laughs) Corn. I know. I know. Was it A, love hotels? B, instant rice? That's racist. C, taxi companies? Or D, playing cards? I really wish it was love hotels. We you all know, know this. D. As I say, you know what? People are lonely, okay? <laughs> we all say D, and that is it. Playing cards. Do you remember the original name of the playing cards? I do not. Hanafuda uh, playing cards. Uh, or Hanafuda nice. cards. Maybe I should look for those next time. I'm That'd be all oh, Good luck, right? All right. What was the first Super Nintendo game, SNES game, to use the Super FX chip? What was the first SNES game to use the Super FX chip? Was it A, Pilot Wings, B, Star Fox, C, Doom, or D, Super Mario Brothers, excuse me, Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island? A, Pilot Wings, B, Star Fox, C, Doom, D, Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island. Okay, Josh says Pilot Wings, me and Ant say Star Fox. Star Fox it is. Man, I was totally gonna say Star Fox too. <laughs> I was like Pilot well, Wing, you know. We that's talked about it a few wagon, weeks ago. Josh, <laughs> we talked about it a few weeks ago. All right, we got eh. we got to be getting close here. Are we done? I don't know. We got a couple more to go. What was right. the first Nintendo game to have a save game feature? What not with not passwords? An actual save game feature? Was it A. Dragon Warrior, B. Final Fantasy, C. Metroid, D. The Legend of Zelda? We all say Zelda. Show me Zelda on the board. Legend of Zelda, it is. Woohoo! I actually used to make my great grandmother who was very old at the time get up out of her seat to play family feud at my grandparents house because they had an oval shaped painting in the living room <laughs> and this poor woman would god bless her she would get up every time and walk her way over to the coffee table to play fast money and by the way it was just me and her playing <laughs> i of course wow. was, was uh, richard dawson i just lost more respect for you what i loved her <laughs> i loved her and i didn't have i didn't have much left <laughs> What was Mario's original name? What was Mario's original name? Was it A, Jumpman, B, Big Red, C, Luigi, (laughs) or D, Squatting Sam? Spelled S-Q-U-A-T-T-I-N apostrophe. I thought it was Stanley. (laughs) Oh, poor Stanley. We're all putting up A, Jumpman. I'm really hoping it's Squatting Sam, and we never knew about it. Jumpman it is... And that was the last question. All right. So, so between between the two contestants, Josh and Anthony. <laughs> so coming Josh in. Josh got eight correct, and Anthony got a cool 11. Wait a minute. I did a lot better than I thought I did, so. You did really well. Did I forget Congratulations. To... Thank you. Thank you, host Larry, Wait, for, I, for I... hosting this game show. <laughs> I got, I got uh, 12. We'll see you next time. I got 12. No, you can't, you can't play. You're the game show host. I <laughs> I will be expecting my Chuck E. Cheese card in the mail. The only person who's going to give you your Chuck E. Cheese card is yourself. <laughs> and Anthony, I need his address so I can steal said card. <laughs> uh, well, I, I will give you Larry's address, phone number, <laughs> all of his email addresses, his and P.O. box, his, his mom's number. That's how you're going to get the Chuck E. Cheese card. <laughs> yes. <laughs> She'll defend me. All right. What a wonderful another week here at the Retros Gamers. Josh, thank you again for coming on. I love these crossover episodes. It's great. Oh, yeah. You're you getting... missed a question. What's the matter? You missed a question in the quiz. No, remember we couldn't do it because it was a... No, no, no. There was Right, but there was one other question. What is the worst <laughs> video game console in history? Is it virtual A, the boy. Virtual Boy? B, the Virtual Boy? <laughs> C, the Virtual Boy? Or D, the Virtual Boy? <laughs> <laughs> everybody's holding up all four cards i see i'm not playing <laughs> that's right because you're the game show host 
All right, Josh, again, thank you very much. You're getting a little too comfortable now on this thank show. You. Thank you, Josh. So... <laughs> it's like a second home to me. I mean, what do you expect? <laughs> no, truly, we greatly appreciate it. Josh, let us uh, let everyone know um, where they can go in times of need. Your, uh, your, uh, your message of hope there. Where can they go? Cool. All right, so if you guys, if you or someone you know right now has been listening to this amazing uh, crossover uh, part one issue, you guys can uh, go to victimsandvillains.net um, slash contact or go to facebook.com slash victimsandvillains, and we would love to be a listening ear for you guys. We would love to be the bridge between you and a counselor, you and a church, uh, everyone that does the show behind the scenes, struggles, uh, has struggled in the past deeply with depression and uh, you know suicide and addiction or self-harm, and uh, we have been able to overcome it. And we believe the same for you. We know, we know the same for you as well. And we just want to be able to. Or if you guys don't want to talk to us and you just want to get a, uh, help anonymously, you guys can also call 1-800-273-8255 or text 741 741. And someone would love to talk to you, whether it's us or anonymously. All right, awesome. And you got anything to plug? Well said. Well said. Uh, no, I, I really don't have anything to plug anymore. I, I'm all plugged out. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, um, one thing. Before you go, what you got? Yes, I have a question for Anthony. Uh oh. So Anthony says that he doesn't have that much respect for Larry. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, hold on. Wow, hold that on. Would, that I'm would, going somewhere with this. Okay, that, that, all right, he's going. Jest, I know. Hold on, he's going somewhere. He's going somewhere. I'm going somewhere with this. Okay. What happens if he buys a virtual boy at the Long Island Expo? Oh, uh, then I'll get to fulfill my dream of destroying said virtual boy in his presence. Oh, <laughs> wait till November. Wait till November. Oh, we can do it okay. together. Oh, that would be great. Just the three of us in a sledgehammer. <laughs> I have. I was well... going to bring Lucille, but I mean that works too. <laughs> Lucille works. I would happily. You know, you can have Lucille. I'll have a sledgehammer. Yes. I will buy a virtual boy, and I will not have money, and I will need Anthony's credit card <laughs> to to borrow, which I will pay him back right away. Yeah, th- n- sorry, your that credit's no good. <laughs> like I That's have no card. <laughs> no, I told you, I told you, Virtual Boys will not go on any of my credit cards. It just won't. <laughs> I've already, I've already warned every company. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. Did you buy a Virtual Boy? Was this you? <laughs> yep, I will immediately be shot. <laughs> so check us out at theretrogamers.com follow us on instagram at the underscore retro gamers of course on facebook facebook.com slash retro gamers podcast and we're one year down and many more to go so we're on we're on the road yes i know um may may our may our second year be filled with the uh same retro fun and equal number of virtual boy insults <laughs> and check us out this friday as we now move over to victims and villains to do some talking over there. And thank you for everyone for listening. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button on iTunes, Spreaker. Follow us on YouTube, iHeartRadio. If you have the app, check us out there. Follow us everywhere. Thank you all, and we'll catch you all next week. <laughs>